Good morning. Happy New Year. Welcome to worship. A few things to remind you of today. Uh, Bible studies will be beginning soon. A week from today, there will be a Bible study on Zoom from 9 to 9.45. You can call the office, Don Potts or Don Henry, for the login information. And then there will be a study on Wednesday evenings, 7 to 8 p.m. We're going to read St. John of the Cross, uh, The Dark Night of the Soul, and it's not morbid. Uh, so you are invited to join us and also call the office for that login information. Uh, blood donors are still needed. The next opportunity here at St. Paul's is January 22nd. Please check um, online and use the sponsor code St. Paul Lutheran Hainsport. Uh, some sad news. Dave Pagankoff is in inpatient hospice at Virtua Mount Holly. So we will keep Dave and his family in our thoughts and prayers that he have a peaceful death. After worship and after Sunday school today, St. Paul's has the joy of welcoming a new member by holy baptism, Kaylee Joy Clark, infant daughter of Christina, and I'm blanking on the dad's name at the moment, Brian, I believe. So uh, we will look forward to that. And now we are ready to begin with the opening hymn. You're going to need to get up out of your seats and off your couches and ready to go for this one. It's a nice way to start the morning.
yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to go right to the first reading now. The first reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, says the Lord. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us say Psalm 147 responsively. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established a peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God, God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattered, scattering frost like ashes. God, God scatters, scatters hail like, like breadcrumbs. Who can, Who can stand, stand against, against God's, God's cold? cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God, God declares, declares the word to Jacob, statutes, statutes and, and judgments, judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Hallelujah. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, 
having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Holy wisdom, holy word. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. For whatever reason, when I read the prologue to John's Gospel in preparing for worship today, the old song, Blinded by the Light, came to mind. Just that one line, Blinded by the Light. I couldn't recall any other lyrics or even who sang it, but that one line kept coming back. So I looked it up, just sat at my computer with the blue light shining and put blinded by the light into the search engine. And like magic, up popped the words to the song. I'll be honest, I had to read on through explanations to understand the meaning of the words because they didn't really make sense to me the first time through. I think it has something to do with fast cars and passion. I'm still not certain I entirely get it. But I do like that one line, blinded by the light. It's so true. We can be blinded by the light. We need light. We have a lot of it here in the nave. 
We want light. If it's pitch dark outside, say, a cloudy night with no moon or starlight, it's really hard to see. In fact, if it's one of those dark nights and you don't have a candle or a flashlight, you can't see at all. Strange as it seems, the same thing happens if the sun is blazing and you don't have dark glasses or maybe some sort of visor to shield your eyes. You can't see it all then either. You find yourself squinting or turning your head so you can see maybe a tiny bit, blinded by the light. Those of us in the Northern Hemisphere with winter's long nights need to be reminded that the light has come, that longer days and war warmth are not gone forever. So it is not accidental that the church set the celebration of Jesus' birth near the winter solstice. It doesn't matter if that was the actual day on which Jesus was born. What matters is that Christ has come. What matters is that the light has come. By now, many of you have taken down your Christmas tree, put all the decorations and lights away until next year. You're eager to get back to normal, although we know it will be several months until we get back to normal. You know, my mother didn't like to take the tree down right after Christmas Day. She left it up as long as possible sometimes until my sister's birthday on February 22nd. She enjoyed reading by the tree on quiet evenings. She enjoyed the lights. And it seems I'm my mother's daughter. I sometimes leave my tree up until candle mass too. Well, whatever your personal preference, at some point in late December or well into February, the tree comes down and the lights are put away. The days grow longer again and the promise of a new growing season looms on the horizon. The increased natural light feels good. In John's Gospel, we hear many times about darkness and light. We heard it a few moments ago in today's reading. In chapter 3, we see Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night, and he can't understand what Jesus is talking about. A bit later, in 319, darkness names the human preference for evil. In chapter 6, darkness denotes the absence of Jesus. People are afraid and feel that God has forsaken them. In chapter 8, darkness is identified with rejecting Jesus, which results in the absence of life, which is death. And finally, in chapter 12, 35, darkness represents a lack of purpose, a stumbling around and not knowing where you're going. Sometimes we can't see a thing because it's pitch dark, it's night and there is no candle or flashlight. When that happens, the only thing you can do is to wait for the next sunrise. <clears throat> Sometimes we can't see a thing because we're blinded by the light. Like an afternoon when the sun is setting and you're driving right into it, you can hardly see the road and sometimes you're not sure where you're going. Total darkness and blinding sunlight can be equally scary because both most, if not all of us, want to know what's next. We want to see what's coming. However, the world being what it is, we cannot always know or see what's coming. What do we do then? We remember this reading from John's Gospel. You remember, perhaps even memorize, John 1, verses 6 through 9. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. You have all received grace upon grace. The light of Jesus. The true light has come, and it can never be taken away. It's like the Christmas tree lights. You've put them away for 11 months. You don't see them every day. You may not even think about them. But the lights are still there. All you have to do is go to the attic or the basement or the garage and open the box. The lights are still there. Jesus, the true light, is still there. Always has been. Always will be. Christ will never go away. All you have to do is open your heart and hands and cry out, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen.
Council installation will be two weeks from today. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance, from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illnesses. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness, especially Dave, Linda, Julia, Marie, Pastor Giselle, Brian, Gabby, Bert, Cindy, and Jack, all our home and all our homebound members. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You show us how to care for one another. Be with Bishop Tracy and our call committee as they continue to search for the next pastor of St. Paul's. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, good morning. During children's time this morning, really when we call it children's time, it's everyone's time. And during this time, we're going to be talking about today's gospel and I'm going to be just starting off with verse 6. Um, it is the first chapter of John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light. And during this time in this first chapter of John, very, very cool. It is, it is really the Christmas story, but it's not the same type of Christmas story as what we find in Luke and in Matthew, where it talks about the birth of Jesus. 
And instead, he's talking about the light and how great the light is. And then he goes on to say that, you know, the light is so great that the darkness cannot overcome it. Pretty fantastic stuff. But I'm going to focus on a particular piece of, a particular phrasing that's found in the 16th verse. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. And in Jesus we do get grace upon grace. Now, sometimes we find that when we have great, lots of grace, I want you to think about it like I've got this thread that is loose in my blouse and it is so loose that it keeps, I keep trying to pull it and it pulls and it pulls. You can see this in the camera or not. So I think about grace. And I was expecting this to just be a short little string that was caught in my blouse and my blouse is unraveling at the hem. And so when I think about grace upon grace and thinking about all the graces that we receive from, we, we receive from God. So the grace at the, um, at the altar rail when we get forgiven for all of our sins. The grace of the word from all of God's gift in the Bible. The grace through baptism. Yes, we've got homework, but you know what? With that homework comes, we learn a whole lot. If you're doing all that work from home, well, guess what? After that, you've got paycheck. So just think about all of the graces that we get from God. And as my hem unravels and unravels and unravels, so too do we get grace upon grace from God. So this week, I'd really like you to think about all of the blessings that we receive. Because every day you will find them in your life. All this we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from sin and hell when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. to share, some more, some less. We ask God to help us grow in our giving so that we can grow in our faith community and welcome new people to share in the joy of knowing Christ. Let us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, you came, you came to, to us, us as one unknown, unknown bringing, bringing joy, joy and, and salvation to the earth. earth. Nourish, Nourish us at, at your banquet, banquet table, that, that with all who welcome your birth, birth we may proclaim your peace. Revealed in Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior. Savior. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, 
proclaim joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. 